recorded 50 new COVID-19 cases yesterday and no deaths, taking the country's infection total to 49,429, while the total of deaths from the virus remain at 1,012. However, two deaths are under investigation. Now, according to reports from the Ministry of Health and Wellness, the new cases consist of 30 females and 20 males between the ages of 7 months and 89 years. Kingston and St. Andrew recorded 16 cases, followed by St. Catherine with 7 cases. St. Mary, St. Anne and Manchester each recorded 5 cases. Westmoreland recorded 4 cases. Clarendon recorded 3 cases. St. James recorded 2 cases, while St. Thomas, St. Elizabeth and Portland recorded 1 case each. 135 persons have recovered from the virus, taking the total of recoveries to 28,054, with 19,984 active cases. There are 131 persons currently hospitalized, nine of whom are critically ill, with 20 moderately ill. In other news tonight, Tourism Minister Edmund Bartlett says the government will begin accepting applications for the Tourism Workers' Pension Scheme on September 1. The announcement that the fund administrator Guardian Life is now ready to accept applications for membership into the scheme was made at yesterday's sitting of the House of Representatives' sectoral debates. Fund administrators Guardian Life, Madam Speaker, is now ready to accept applications for membership for the pension scheme. And that's a very important point that I want to indicate. And we have established September 1 as the commencement date for applications for members. And these applications can be done virtually or in person. Minister Bartlett told the House that the adjusted timeline is being affected by the coronavirus COVID-19 pandemic causing stakeholders to experience cash flow challenges. He advised, however, that instead of the initial 3% to match workers' contributions, employers will be asked to start at 5%. The Ministry also recognizes, Madam Speaker, the challenges that the COVID-19 pandemic has presented to employers in the tourism sector. And in light of this and the problems that we know has uh, happened as a result of cash flow difficulties, the industry burn cash, literally burn cash in order to just stay alive during those 14 months. And so we have agreed to revisit the timeline for the start of the employer contribution. And so we have agreed with the sector that, um, and I have to come to Parliament of course to make that um, uh, adjustment, that the contribution for the employers will commence January 2023, but instead of the 3% contribution that they would make now to match the 3% of the worker, they will start at 5%. Minister Bartlett also reported that the government is still on track to provide 70,000 affordable housing solutions for Jamaicans within the next five years. Oh no, the strides being made to make housing solutions accessible to more Jamaicans. We are still on target to provide 70,000 houses within the next five years. And we are working with the developers to bring down the price points, average of some 5 million for a standard one bedroom and 8 million for a standard two bedroom room. Minister Pernell Charles Jr. shared that there is also a need not just to build, but to design the framework for a housing sector that is sustainable and resilient. For a comprehensive national housing policy, we'll be placed before Parliament to address the complex housing challenges. Meanwhile, Minister Bartlett announced that Jamaica will be hosting the 66th meeting of the Commission of the Americas on June 24 and 25. We then went on to meet with the Secretary General of the UNWTO. And I'm pleased to advise that Jamaica, as the chair of the 
Commission on the Americas will host the 66th meeting of the Commission of the Americas on June 24 and 25 here. And for the first time, the Secretary General of the UNWTO, Mr. Zorab Polo Lixkavili, will be our special guest in Jamaica. And it will be his first visit into the Caribbean. He went on to say that the Tourism Minister of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, the Honorable Ahmed Al Khatib, will be attending the meetings of the Americas later this month to discuss a partnership between the two countries. And I'm very pleased to announce, therefore, that His Excellency Mr. Ahmed Al Khatib, the Minister of Tourism, will visit Jamaica on the 24th and 25th along with the Secretary General of the UNWTO to foster greater collaboration between the two countries because they see Jamaica as a successful tourism model. And he said to me, we want to copy some of what you did here in Jamaica in the development that we are having for Saudi Arabia. It, I felt a little humbled by it, but greatly honored by it. Still making the news tonight, Taxi operators in Negril, Westmoreland, are urging the relevant authorities to come to their aid in resolving issues affecting them at the transportation center in the tourist town. Here is Javon Thomas with more on this story. Taxi operators that uses the Negril Transportation Center in West Milan staged a peaceful protest along the bus park this week about issues that have been affecting them as public transport operators. Junior Scott, one taxi operator that uses the transport center, explained that there are three major issues that are affecting them. Among them are the potholes in the bus park. Well, there are three major issues that we are facing right now. Um, the bus park compromises two of them. The potholes in the bus park are really bad and the garbage. The garbage situation is, is embarrassing, you know. Yeah, it's our office and when you come in our office, it's... It, it's it, 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 it's just a sad place to be. The garbage is so stink and it, and it gets scattered all over the place. It's a $100 fee to enter the bus park every morning. We have a whole heap of taxi that use the bus park, probably more than 10 different routes. So you have, like, for example, you have um, Negril to Savlamar, Negril to Green Jail, Negril to Lucy, Negril to West End, Orange Jail. We have more than 10 Albon, different Green routes. Island, Orange Bay, Albon. You have, a, you have some patrols, you cannot miss them, no matter what you do. You know? So for example, let's say a pregnant lady was in your car and she dropped in one of them, well, she could lose her baby. Front end parts, man, front end, even back end parts, tires. You see a man busting tires in one of the wall last week. A man busting tires in one of the wall, I got through it. He, he never realized he saw it deep. And when he dropped down the night, we all hear, tires start blow out. Yeah, right. Gas price is the third problem that we have. The gas price is going up. And we ask the government, please, if you couldn't do anything for we, especially in Western Jamaica, if you notice the gas price down here is higher than anywhere else in Montego yeah, Bay. Man. If you go to Santa Cruz, you see the gas price is less. less. The gas price Flying in Negril is the worst. And we're not asking for a fair rise. We want to make that clear. We, do, we are not asking for a fair increase. Because a lot of people, is, no, we understand that the people are struggling to make ends meet just like us. Like so we are not asking for a fair increase. What we are asking for is some gas, help gas, in the gas, gas price gas and to fix up the park. And that's why we're out here today. Another taxi operator appeals to their politician representatives to give them some assistance to fix the issues they are facing. My name is Davian. Well, my issues is all about the gas price because me operate from Negril to Lucy and the gas price is very high. You understand, when I say very high, I mean like a $205 a litre for gas. Down here, so in a Westmoreland. And when you go outside, it's more cheaper. You understand, so I wonder what I'm going down here, so. Nobody no business with you down here, so. I hate me want know, and the bus park too, as we're doing, as Mr. Scott said, in a terrible condition for some hole in a bus park where we want to fix up and all of them something there too. And no, 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 joke thing. You can't see them. You, as the reporter, know a drive come in there when you drop in there, you say, ouch. You have to just know, say, I want to hold this, so you drive around, so you drop in at them. You understand? So, so Mr. Wills and uh, uh, Mr. Bertel, I'm going to try to do something, yeah, man. A nigger this, you know. And you can't deal with this, so don't you, so. You understand? Because all the, all the dumpsters need to move. 
because you have people from dear, dear, just come throw garbage in there, dead dog, puss, all of them something there. So we have, we have to smell all of them something there. Them do something that don't really work. You understand? And them do something there in a bus park and something where people use daily. You understand? If garbage in there, nobody not going to want to come in there. How often the garbage come and collect the garbage? It come like, it come late. It come, but it come late. And that's the problem. And it come, it come two times already from man. They have a big dumpster inside of there. It's just everybody just from all over the neighborhood. Them driving past and no say there. Them just come dump them little garbage in there. All of them something there. But you know how it goes. It's just the people them around here. So they have to get somewhere to put the garbage dumpster. They have to make something proper. Leon, who frequents the area, says the facilities in the park are not well kept, and as such, the space is in a deplorable condition. My name is Leon. They call me Nabid around. Original Nabid from this town right here. The bus park need to fix it. Look while I sit down in the bus park drinking and smoking with my friends. And when I look, I see the police vehicle. One police coming out, coming around the, the, the bathroom. When I look, I see the police vehicle go down in the, in the big hole, coming back like this. Hop. And then I said to my friends, look, that's the reason why the taxi man are perpetrating. So we need the bus park to fix. The garbage bin, not appropriate. The bathroom, again, no one using the bathroom. The bathroom, any, 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 don't appropriate, no time at all. People come, they, 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 they ruin it right a, 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 across the, the bin. They go behind the shops. People um, keep on making barricade behind the shops because they ruinating and the filthing. So we need those things to stop. They collect on a lot of money a day, more than 20000 a day, a, a day, for the bus park looking like that. Realistic, we need it to fix. And the next thing again, we not, we, you don't come to for this, but the next thing again, and that's last week this this gen clean. We need it to clean very often, very, very often. The bus park, the bus park that's a very viral point. We need someone to talk to about that. When we reach to the, when we reach to the fire station, do we fall? Wow. That's the improper force. If you enter a Negril town, coming from south, not the North Coast. Negril, look. Look at it. Even me, you know, even you live here, tomorrow morning the government has a move, I don't have a problem because I need better. I don't like it. We'll bring you more on this story in subsequent newscasts. I'm Javon Thomas reporting for Mellow TV News. In other news tonight, residents and taxi operators in eastern Westmoreland leading into St. James are pleading with their political representative and the government to fix roads in their communities that are in a deplorable condition. Our news team visited the areas this week and here is Kelly May with more on this story. Residents of Retrieve in Marchmont Road, Eastern Westmoreland, block sections of the roadway with trees in protest of deplorable road conditions, which spans over two decades. David Green, a resident of Marchmont Road, explained that the road will be condemned until it's fixed. I live in a community 45 years now. This road fixed for the last time PG Patterson in a power. All we are talking about the road, the road now fixed. The road are broke away, it's a deteriorate. One of the main community man, Adrian, one woman a drive a car, try to beat him on the film side, kill him, pan spot. He did left four pitney. Woman on the man of the breadwinner. Woman on the sofa suffer. At two times, me have a shift from bus. Bus man have saved me too much time. Me can't buy one car yet. Me can my family pan my bike. Suppose man lick me off, kill me and my family. How that go? Boss, me are telling you, playing something right now. Always is here. That road we can't them till it fix. Nothing can go through it. Anything I go through it, we them go through it. A back over and it's okay, Kamal. Here, here is a road that the road they can them. We are locked. This road they can them. It they can them till it fix. It not open back. Yeah, man. Here is a road that can't open. This not open. It not open. So we want some. So, so, Mr. Anib, so, so Mr. Anib and Andrew Wallis, we are telling you, this is not open. Five years ago to Cambridge. Taxi operators who ply the route explained how this issue has cost them tremendously. Me and Mr. Anglin you know, from Bridgewater. Been here for me, a child, for me, a toddler. And the road is the same way. Me a taxi operator travel on the road daily, up and down. Right now, 
check in my vehicle back, I just go buy two tyres. They are expensive, really expensive. Surprise when I go to Mobile this morning to buy two tyres. Over 20 odd thousand. And Carl said, every other month I have to buy a tyre for my vehicle. Just cast a road. Front end parts. Front end parts. Muffler, tear off. Yeah, man. Just for chance for people from here to Mobile. Really bad. Man. Really rough, man. Really bad. We're sick and tired of this now. And we now stop. Block the road until it's fixed. And I'm dead serious too. So who with me, with me? Who not with me, against me? You understand? No joke. My name is Just Fines, you know. I'm his, I'm his old, old man from the road, and I'm around this road from my little boy, you know. And I tell you something. I'm not going to drive on the road now. My mother's 100 and, and 104 months. How should I go to the hospital when this road and we can't drive on it? We want a road. And we want light, we want water, we want everything. Because I don't want to raise my voice for nobody, nobody contact me, I look for me, I look no hand out, you know. It would have to fix. Mm, and we don't walk and play with people fix the road. Mm. Because I have a drive, and I, when I come in by the gas station, she has one just thrown at the house, and the, the first one that walked to me, and I dropped my whole party road, yeah. A teacher at the Cambridge Farmer School who lives in the Marchmont Road community, along with other persons who also have to travel to Montego Bay for work, explain the challenges they too are faced with. My name is Brian Graham and I am a teacher at the Cambridge Primary School and I have to traverse this road every single day going to school. And let me tell you now, this road has deteriorated 10 times worse than it was last year. I cannot go through this road without my car bottom tearing up, tearing apart. Right now my front, the front end of my car is completely gone and I've decided that I want the road to fix before even thinking about fixing the front end. The last, the last member of parliament did nothing to, to help the cars to fix the road and we are here today hoping that we can get some amount of justice as it relates to this road. Yeah, my name is Kastner Spence. I'm an electrician. I work in Montego Bay. And I have to traverse on this road every single day. And I'm telling you, I own a pickup, Nissan Frontier pickup truck, and I have to sell that truck because I can't maintain it because of the road. Every week, front end parts, back end parts, the whole of my muffler tear off. I have to sell it because I can't afford to maintain my vehicle. I'm telling you the truth. Not even donkey no one no one walk on this road, the road bad. This is Mr. Edmund Bailey. I work in Montego Bay most of my time. I drive that red pickup over there. And right now me I tell you, on my front end, gone again, second the road down the stuff. Because the road, the condition of the road is so bad. Because you see, me have to try to fix it as me hear the parts going on. Because I don't want to run in an exam in a mobi and then take out my plate. All the residents, including farmers, are asking their political representative to come to their rescue urgently. I'm here in Marchman Road. I work as at Cambridge. I apply my trade in Montego Bay also. I'm a farmer of Westmoreland, Eastern Westmoreland I'm farming. At the moment, right now, with this pine on my head, I'm telling you, I'm pine in my bush can't get to come out neither. We have no road system to take out our produce. The bridge at Great River right now has in a deplorable state of mind. The bridge at John Trout also in a deplorable state of mind, same way. And we have got nothing from the two MP in the division of West Milan up here. So. And I tell them to explain and straight murder. I make up my mind to go back to work now. Because one day work I talk about now. I can't feed myself, but I don't think about myself, I think about the others. We have students around the road. This roadway is not clean. Every back to school, the whole roadway is in a hoodland state. You can't have your picnic at school and walk on the road and have your sight motor vehicle. If you go to work, you have your ex up your shoes to come around for the other work. What kind of people like this? See it? Well, um, school closed one year and odd. The children is just going back to try to achieve the latest on their schoolwork and sake of the bad road, the students them can't go to school. So we want Mr. Lawrence and also Andrew Holness to come and make a good report and an issue on the road. Reporting for Mellow TV News, I'm Kelleen May. Meanwhile, business operator Vivian Robinson, who runs a guest house and farm in the Retrieve and Hamity districts, said that he agrees with residents that the roadways are in urgent need of repair. It's a disgrace to see the road condition. There's a song that says only fisherman and fisherwoman can cross it. But the road condition in this community, boy, I'm, I'm begging 
all of them, hand your oldness and all of them, don't come up here because them can't cross it. The path to hold them is more than a foot deep and more than six feet wide. The li- cars, the trucks, nothing can cross the road condition. The deterioration of the trees on the roadside, breaking down the light poles and the light wires, and they have one little truck, um, one small little JPS truck with two men clearing more than a mile of road. That alone can make it, so JPS needs to do something else about it. So the road condition up in Retrieve, up in uh, Amity District, which I'm farming, we have no road. We have um, plenty of people living in the, in the district, and I can say about two miles of roadway is a disgrace. When it rains, no car can drive, no trucks. I had, some, I had a truck last week delivering mall, and the truck had to turn back with the mall because of the condition. The, the, not even the truck can manage the deterioration of the road. So whichever MP, whichever um, councillor, this area needs some help. One taxi operator from Seaford Town, Devel White, says that the roadway that leads into Cambridge is also in a deplorable condition. For too long, you know, this road has stayed like this. I don't see where it looks like they're going to deal with it no time soon, is it? I yeah, don't really need to start out the road for sure because government does take too much far away, is it? And they're not giving a road for drive one and every move and move. They might take far away, whether ticket, buy ticket or buy season vehicle or anything, you see. And this is road here. People them from Seaford come all the way back down to go Cambridge and I hit them off a cherry pan. You have two roads leading and have one round on the other side around the system where you go to Seaford. And the two roads them come like a disgrace. Like a horse track, you see. Yeah, if I even want to road them then can fix them, people then can get good road for drive pan. People then stuck at Cambridge at night time then can't get no drive for garden yard. They need to fix if I even want to road them man. Yeah, they need to start out the road for God, see for town, is it? We will bring you more on this story in subsequent newscasts. As we continue with the news tonight, the Bogwalk police have charged 21-year-old Malik Winter of Cheesefield District in Linstead with manslaughter. The charge is in relation to a fatal collision that occurred in Bogwalk on Tuesday, June 8th that claimed the life of a woman. Reports coming into our news center are that at approximately 9.15 a.m., Winter was driving a Toyota Fielder motor car through the Bogwalk Gorge. He allegedly overtook a line of traffic and collided with a Toyota Hyatt motor truck in which the deceased 59-year-old Valerie Ennis was a passenger. Now, as a result of the collision, the Toyota Hyatt plunged into the Rio Cobre. Ennis was pronounced dead at the hospital. Nine other persons were treated at the hospital for non-life-threatening injuries. Winter was charged on Friday, June 11. His court date has not yet been finalized. Continuing with the news tonight, Minister of National Security Dr. Horace Chang updated the House about the success of the Zones of Special Operations, ZOSOs, in yesterday's sitting of the House of Representatives sectoral debate. Minister Chang noted that the recent success of the ZOSOs led to other members of Parliament requesting the declaration of ZOSOs in their constituencies. What has now become a lesser aspect of our parliamentary proceedings I'm here today to again call attention to the groundbreaking work that is being carried out within the Mount Salem, Denham Town, Greenwich Town, and August Town communities as a result of their designation as zones of special operations, special security, and community development measures. The government does not take lightly this process of updating the parliament and the work lightly, and, not, and the work that is taking place within these zones in the context of seeking approval for the extension. Madam Speaker, the effectiveness of the zones of special operations is devoid of is impatient of debate. The four zones that have been declared are working effectively, and the people attest to the significant infrastructural, social, and critically the security improvements that they are experiencing within their communities. It is understandable, therefore, that colleague members of Parliament across the entire island have been requesting the declaration of zones within their constituencies. This government has consistently made our intention 
to expand the zones of special operations model to the various communities that meet the criteria. Factors following the decades of infrastructural neglect and sustained criminal activity by armed thugs, the number of vulnerable and volatile communities has increased over time. The clear hold and build model of zones of special operation enabled us to simultaneously enforce the necessary suppression measures while strengthening the security, social investment, and physical redevelopment of their communities. He added that over 21 communities can easily meet the criteria for ZOSOs. However, it is not feasible for the government to simultaneously operate in these areas. Over 21 communities have been identified by the Plan Institute of Jamaica as of being most vulnerable and volatile communities. In other words, these are communities that would meet the criteria for the designation of ZOSO easily. And there are others um, within that framework. These are considered those are the highest priorities. However, it is not feasible for the government to declare zones of special operation in all of these communities at the same time given the extensive human, financial and institutional capacity that it requires. Even so, Madam Speaker, the policy and the practice of this government has never been to neglect its most vulnerable at any time. I have outlined in my contributors here sectoral debate, the government has issued a policy directive to reposition and strengthen the social investments in order to ensure a meaningful long-term impact on the lives of people of the identified communities. And those are some of the stories making news. We will return with other stories as Minister of State in the Ministry of Labor and Social Security, Xavier Main, says the ministry, through the National Council for Senior Citizens, continues to respond to the needs of older persons. And the High Commission of Canada in Jamaica is providing increased funding of more than 20 million Jamaican dollars as part of the Canada Fund for Local Initiatives program. But first, we'll take a break and then join Christopher Scott with the very latest in sports. 